I will lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is a shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch your coming and your going both now and forevermore. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Who is glad to be here today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for this time that we can gather and lift your name high. That, that we can sing songs of praise before you and to you with nothing in our heart but thanksgiving. Regardless of the week we've been through, this is a time where we can just come and lay it all down, open it all up to you and say we love you. And that's what we have gathered to do. To say you are our God. You are are holy. And we want to just serve you with all of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our minds. We come before you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is great to welcome everyone here this morning to the to, to Bedford Church of the Nazarene. I just believe that, that God brought each one of us here for a specific reason, for a specific purpose today. Not just to show up, not just to, well, I go to church every Sunday, but he's brought us here for something special today. A, a few announcements, board members, make sure uh, uh, Gene has been handing them out, uh, but you have your board packets. Uh, we have a board meeting here Tuesday night, uh, uh, begin at six o'clock. But you have your packets. Make sure you go home. Study those. Uh, if you have any questions, jot those down. Uh, I, I would just encourage us with this. It'll make meetings smooth, uh, uh, flow much, much more smoother when we just be, are ready to go into that meeting and not have everything thrust upon us uh, the day of. Uh, so so they're, 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 you guys have all those. Randy uh, has a, an announcement he is going to make about Celebrate Life. Be in prayer uh, uh, for Joel and Carly. He, he texted me late last evening. Uh, both of them are not feeling well this morning. So be in prayer for them. Uh, continue to pray for the Kanicki family and, uh, uh, and, and Ginnick as they work through these times. But share what you have for us. All right, for Celebrate Life, for all the parents uh, for Celebrate Life, it's 185 per student. That includes gas and the travel and everything. Uh, a little bit more expensive this week or this time uh, around uh, but also it's the forms didn't get out until Monday so I didn't have them to pass out last Sunday they are due by Tuesday with all the money and everything so I can send them out by Thursday otherwise they will be late and they charge $20 for late fees so I don't think we want late fees so uh, if I can get these back uh, by Tuesday at, at Gina's desk I will make sure they're out by then so it's 185 per student I would also follow up with this and, and just say, uh, teens, those of you that are going, and parents, uh, uh, those, those costs are, are expensive. I realize that, and we realize that. If, if there's anybody that needs help, please come and see myself or see, see, see one of the pastors or see Gina, and we will figure out a way to make sure that, that your teen uh, is able to make that happen. This is a very important thing. And, and we've got a good group of teens that, that, that are able to go, um, but we also want to make sure that they're able to go as well. So if you need any help, don't be afraid to come and see myself, see a pastor, let us know, and we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen so your team can attend that, uh, those things that they've worked hard for. Anybody have a word of praise? Just quickly. How's your week been? Has it been good? Has God said anything to you this week? Yeah? yeah. yeah? All right. Does anybody want to share? Oh, I know. Dude, stand up. Happy birthday to this guy right here. What is it, about 25? Uh, you're halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> I joined the five-decade club. Oh, boy. Welcome. You're in. I'll give you your card after service. <laughs> but, but let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy. You know you're getting close. Yeah, it never ends. 
You got to get off their main. Well, I better be quiet. I don't want to go political. Let, let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joel. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday. Anybody else have a birthday? I'll embarrass you. Huh? Let's worship. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. And here we are to worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you that we can come together corporately and lift high your holy name, your precious name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are so, so good. You are a good, good Father. And we just want to first and foremost just take a moment and quiet ourselves down and say thank you. I would encourage each one of us just to whisper out or just say it in your heart or just say it under your breath. But just if you feel like lifting it out, just say, Father, thank you. for bringing us through this week. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for comforting us. Thank you for... Thank you for being our God, our Savior. As we continue to move through this season of Lent and journeying towards the cross. Palm Sunday is just another couple weeks out. What a day and what, a, what an excitement was going through the city that day. Things took place that day just as you had said they would. It was a bit of a shock and a surprise to many as the day started to draw to a close and moving through the week leading up to your gathering with a group of men the Last Supper. But we're on this side of it. We thank you for that side. Oh, we also praise you and lift our, 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 our voices together and say thank you for the amazing grace. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you for loving us. Thank you. Lord, we lift Joel and Carly before you this morning. We, we, we just pray, Lord, uh, right there in their home right now, Lord, we just pray that you come in and just, just touch and heal and do a mighty work right there as they aren't feeling well, and you know that. We just pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, our healer, our provider. Touch them. Lift them back to full health. Lord, I thank you that I received a, a, a text this morning from my younger sister and, 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 and their son, Stephen, who, who, had, who was in a, just a terrible, terrible accident a couple weeks back and surgery on his back and broken in two places. It's a miracle he's alive. But, Father, he is home today. We thank you. We praise you. And we glorify and honor your name. Lord, draw that young man 
ever closer unto yourself. Draw him into right relationship with you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for touching him. And Lord, we continue to pray for the Kanicki family. We pray for Ginnick right now. We pray for Barbara. We pray for Anna. And Lord, we pray for the extended family as well. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together Friday. And to just do our best to bring comfort and peace in a tough, tough situation. But as Ginnick would share and Just thank you for the work that you've done and are doing and will continue to do throughout and within that family. Continue to lift them up and comfort them, we ask and pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the country of Ukraine. We pray for our brothers and sisters there. I shake my head. I can't imagine. But one thing's for certain. You are the same God there as you are here. And we praise you for that. And I pray right now, Father, continue to to, to speak, continue to move. And I pray that ears will be able to hear and eyes will be able to see. and, 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 And government leaders will heed your voice. Lord, do a mighty work there. Throughout the church, throughout the country, and we pray for Russia as well, and those surrounding countries in the area. Lord, we pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I pray that you continue to give them their daily bread and us our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, for thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. We love you. And we have come to lift your name high. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock, our Savior, Messiah. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles, or if you, if you look it up on your device to, to John chapter 1, the Gospel uh, uh, of John in the first chapter, written somewhere in the time frame of 85, 90 A.D., just after the destruction of Jerusalem. Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written sometime before 70 A.D., so the Gospel of John was written, written you know, a, a little bit after. And within the Gospel of John, uh, he writes about eight signs. He calls them signs, but they're the, the miracles that... Now we know that that there were more than eight miracles uh, that took place throughout uh, Jesus' life. We understand that, but John just shares some of the the, the main ones. Those being, he turned the water into wine. Chapter 2, he healed an official son. In chapter 4, he healed the invalid at Bethesda. In chapter 5, and fed 5,000. In in, in chapter 6, he walked on water. In chapter 6, he he healed a blind man. In chapter 9, and and he healed Lazarus. Bring, you know, Lazarus come forth in, in chapter 11. And then the the amazing, miraculous catch of fish there in, in chapter 21. The law was revealing Jesus Christ. But the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and and, and, and all those things. But the Word brings something bigger into the picture. The Word brought something amazing into the picture. The Word brought forgiveness. The Word brought cleansing. The Word brought sanctifying power. 
within and throughout the church of Jesus Christ. In the church of the Nazarene, we, we have a manual that, uh, that, 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 that talks about uh, the policies and, and theology and it talks about the doctrine and the makeup of the church of the Nazarene. And within that church manual, um, and it, 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 just, it just guides us. It's a good guide for us. It's not the word of God, but everything within that manual is based on the word of God. We have 16 articles of faith. We believe in a holy God. We believe in a trinity, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our article of faith, we believe in the holy scriptures. We believe in the plenary inspiration of the holy scriptures, plenary being full, complete, inspired by God. Inerrant in that it contains everything we need for salvation. That's our article of faith, number four, in a nutshell. We believe the word of God to be true. I've entitled this series that I'm beginning today, This We Know. This we know. Some things we know. What goes up is going to come down. Correct? Drive over that speed limit too long. This I know. You will get caught at some point. Now you may want to talk your way out of it. But this we know, rules are and guidelines are for our benefit. It would not be good if there were no speed limits out there, though I'd like to try it for a month or two. But it's not going to happen. What are some things you know? The sun came up this morning. It may not have been shining bright. It may be a little bit cloudy. But this I know, the sun came up. How do I know that? Because the Lord placed it there. And he placed it on a table, a time. Now he's not constrained to time, but we operate that way. This I know. What do you know? What's, what's something you know? Jesus is coming again. We don't know the day or the hour, but we can take it to the bank. He is coming again. This we know. Anyone else? Jesus is the same yesterday? Today? Well, what about tomorrow? He's the same. This we know. We all sang that song in Sunday school, Jesus loves me. This I know. How do we know that? For the Bible tells me so. There are some things we know. There are also some things that we don't know. I am not a rocket scientist, but there's some things out there that I think to myself, surely it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. You ever have one of those? You ever, I'm mad I see you smile and you get it. You get too close to a 440 wire, 20 wire, the little hairs on the back of your finger will stand up. This I know. I had a maintenance man tell me I was working with him one time when I used to work for a living, and, 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 and he, was, he was working on this electrical box, and Butch looked at me as I started to reach in. He said, whoa, 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 don't do that. Let me give you a little advice. If you get too close, it's going to pull you right into that, just like a magnet. And then he proceeded to show me. And as soon as you could, you could just see the little hairs on his knuckles start to stand. And he pulled his hand back. He said, this I know. Stay behind me when I'm working on electricity. So I did from that point forward. But there are some things we know. There are some things we don't fully know. There are some things even now we don't know. But as we journey and, 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 and move along this, 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 this adventure of life, God begins to make things clear. 
God begins to reveal things even more and more and more. And the reality and the truth is this. He does. This I know. He does get sweeter and sweeter every day. Turn with me to John chapter 1. This we know. Out of the New International Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Verse 4. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John the Baptist. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. We've got the word, we've got the light. Just so much wrapped up in here. Verse 9, the true light that gives light to the world, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Verse 12, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. This we know. And we hold it dear to our heart. We embrace that. We became, becoming even more and more children of God. This we know. Children born not of natural descent, verse 13, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh. Do we really believe that? The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. And verse 16 reads like this, And out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you. And as we head off today, Lord, I would pray, guide us, lead us, change us, mold us, shape us ever more and more and more into the image in which we were created. We thank you for the word. It is true. And the word will set us free. May the words of my mouth be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O God, our Savior, in Jesus' name, Amen. A few things I, I think we can grab a hold of out of this passage of Scripture, you know, and, 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 and moving forward. This we know, that his, the first thing I see right off the bat, his very presence, his very entrance into this world in which he created, and, 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 and that, that, that incarnation, and, and he being born of a virgin, his very presence, his very entrance is light and life. The people walking in darkness have seen what? A great, great light. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Have you ever been working on something or you're putting something together for school or something like that and it's a homework assignment, it's a paper due in college. Remember those papers, we, we, the, all those, those things we had to write at NBC and we just loved it and we smiled every time we sat down at that computer and I'm thinking, I had a friend from South Carolina, met him at Bible College, never once did he type a paper. He retired state policeman, South Carolina. 
He paid his daughter a penny a word to type his papers. <laughs> a penny a word. I said, Richard, what's wrong with you? He said, I can't type. I said, you were a supervisor in the South Carolina State Police. I had a secretary. <laughs> he never typed one paper. But you're, what's, how about, yeah, he's a preacher. Yeah, he was, he's a very good preacher. But when you're sitting down to do something like that or you're putting something together or you're working on something and then all of a sudden it just goes together and a light comes on. That's our Savior coming into the world, a world which was dark, a world which was dreary, a, weir, a world which was evil and this and that. And then when he came, a light has dawned. John writes it in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 like this. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. The very presence of God in this world is light because there is no darkness in him whatsoever. Though it may be dark around us, know this. If God and God is there, it is light around him because darkness is as light to him. This we know. The nation and Nehemiah and, 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 and the group there that had went to, to, to fix the wall of the city, the wall of, 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 you know, those things that had to be fixed. They write in Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 6 and, and Ezra is speaking and, and the, 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 the nation is, is bowing down before the Lord and they're confessing their sins and, and putting everything back right. And, and, and these are the words out of Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 6. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and is all that is in them. You give life to everything. And the multitudes of heaven worship you. Jesus enters the city, and the crowd is excited. And the Pharisees are frustrated. The Sadducees are frustrated. Teacher, you got to quiet your people down. What, would you, what did Jesus say? Even if I did, even if I did, the rocks would cry out. And I see that right here. Oh, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. His very presence is light and life. Job put it like this in chapter 10 verse 12. You gave me life and showed me kindness and in your providence you watched over my spirit. This one who brings light into the dark world is watching over us. His very presence is giving us life. I love how David writes in Psalm 36 verse 9 but I'm going to, I'm going to read it to you out of the new century version. It says you are the giver of life. You are the giver of life, and your light lets us enjoy life. Now, I realize there are times, there are seasons that we are just not ecstatically happy all the time. There are those times that we may not have a smile on our face, but we can also say that even during those times, the joy of the Lord is my strength because he gives light and brings life into our world, into our lives. His very presence is light and life. We see another thing in verses 6 through 8. Let me read verses 6 through 8 again very quickly. There, is a man, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And I can still see him in, 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 in that, one, that, one, that, one, that one spot in the chosen where he, he, he's hiding, he jumps out and scares them. Boo! And you know, they, they, and Peter calls him what? Creepy John. He's just a little goofy. Uh, the wild hair and all this stuff that's going on. But that's who they're talking about here. That's who John is writing about. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. He came, verse 7, he came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. His very presence, Father, 
Son, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, his very presence is light and life in our lives, in this world, but he also loves involving others in the mix. I mean, John, come on. Hair's wild. Didn't shower much. Ate locusts. I mean, can you see him in his teeth? But what was his message? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent. He loves involving others in the mix. This one who, who, who John writes about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was and the Word was God. He loves, the Word loves involving others in the mix. Peter, come along. Andrew, come along. Nathaniel, come along. Thaddeus, come along. Matthew, oh, by the way, you don't know what he's done. Oh, I know exactly what he's done. Matthew, come on, man, you're with us. He loves involving others in the mix. I look around this congregation and I see people called by God. Some to preach. Some to work in vocations where they can help other people. Some to work in vocations where some people just can't help themselves. But we are all called to be involved in the mix. Every nation, tribe, and tongue has been called to be part of the mix. Some may not have accepted yet, but that doesn't mean they're not called. Paul put it like this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. I am so thankful that the old is gone in my life. That the new has come. Can you testify to that? I am thankful that the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Pastor, that's your job. I don't see where it says pastor there. It says gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Why? Because he loves involving everyone in the mix. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, verse 19, not counting people's sins against them. Amen. Thank you, Father. Praise God. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Can I share this? You may be the only Jesus. Some people ever see. Don't miss out on the opportunity to bring light, to bring life, to speak comfort and peace in and throughout this world in which we Live. Turn with me, if you would, to Colossians chapter 1. Beginning with verse 24. Colossians chapter 1. Beginning with verse 24. Talking about, you know, he, he loves involving others in the mix. And, and, and Paul writes it like this. Colossians chapter 1, beginning with verse 24. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. Are you suffering right now? Are you rejoicing? Paul is. Now I rejoice in what I'm suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. 
the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles, I am thankful for that, made known among the Gentiles, the glorious riches of this mystery. Well, pastor, what's the mystery? The mystery has been revealed. His name is Jesus Christ, and he loves involving us in the mix. It's his deal. It's his story. It's his job. We are just along for the ride and to grow and to mature, and he will carry on to completion that which he began. This we know. Amen. This we know he will do, which is, you know, he, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the message. Christ in us, the hope of glory. I want it. I want it. I want it. Well, it begins with Jesus. It begins with accepting that he came born of a virgin, but that just doesn't happen. I, I, God is God and we are not. And his ways are not our ways, nor are our ways his ways, nor are our thoughts his thoughts, or his thoughts our thoughts. He can do it how he wants, but he loves involving others in the mix. And his very presence is light and life. And verse 14, back in our text, the word became flesh, made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. He's filled with grace and truth. He extends it out to us. And, you know, he says in John chapter 8, the truth will set you free. And he extends grace. I have compassion on the crowds. Every time he came ashore, he says, something's going to happen. You just don't know what it is yet. He's filled with grace and truth. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He's full of grace and truth. And that grace and truth is sufficient and it is abundant. For you see, out of his fullness, John chapter 1, verse 16, out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. I love our article of faith, provenient grace. That grace that was, is, is working in our lives before we even knew what grace was or what grace is Jesus, God the Father, has always been wooing us back into right relationship with him. That's provenient grace. Always at work throughout his creation, and we didn't even know it. Preventing things from happen, preventing grace, provenient grace. I'm so thankful for the dispensation of grace. He has came with, filled with grace and truth, and it is sufficient for us. And it is, this, this truth is abundant. Oh, let it grab a hold of your heart. Let it overflow from the, all, all the way from the top of our heads, all the way through the bottom of our feet. This grace and truth flows. I don't know, maybe someone's sitting here today and you're just at a, a tough, low, low, low spot on your journey right now. Philip Yancey says this, grace like water will even flow to the very lowest part. This we know. Grace, like water, will flow to the very lowest part because gravity also plays a part in that water flowing to the very lowest part. Amen? That's what gravity's all about. Grace operates that same way. We, we, we believe in the work of justification. We believe in regeneration. We believe in adoption. That's part of one of our articles of faith. And we also believe that sanctification, the uh, article of faith, number, number 10, entire sanctification. Not only do we believe in the work of justification, regeneration, and adoption, uh, that salvation crisis experience moment, we also believe that sanctification comes through this amazing, irresistible grace of God because once you have tasted, once you have tasted authentically of his amazing grace and truth, nothing else will ever satisfy again. And the word 
became flesh. And he is filled with grace and truth. And it is sufficient. And it is abundant. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. John writes in chapter 8 verse 31 through 32. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said these words. If you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. Then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And he came with abundant grace and abundant truth and sufficient grace and sufficient truth. Watchman Nee put it like this. To secure one's freedom, the Christian must experience God's light. Must experience God's light which is God's truth. He came and brought light into the world. That is God's truth. This we know. And you know what the amazing thing is? He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. James chapter 1, verse 18. I remember my mom who had had enough of an alcoholic husband. Who had had enough of the abuse. She could take no more. And I remember as a 10 year old boy. setting us eight children down and tears flowing down her face. And asking each one of us, what should I do? We were just kids. And I remember the tears flowing on each of our faces and my, my, sis, my older sister, and my older brother and then myself and the line down through. We'd had enough too. But I remember each eight of us children saying, please don't. It had nothing to do with us being smart or anything. But I believe it had everything to do with the reality and the truth of provenient grace. I wish I could say that directly after that, my father gave his heart to the Lord and everything was good. It took some time. But he did come to know the Lord. And he did get the help that he needed. Because this word that became flesh and came and made his dwelling among us also extended grace. Not only to my family, but to my father. And as he battled dementia and Alzheimer's near the end of his life, as I visited him there in that facility, In his last lucid moment, he said these words. Thank you for 
extending grace to me. I haven't always got it right. And I don't think there's anybody sitting here that will say, I've, I've had it right for years. What are you waiting for, Pastor? No. But God's grace is sufficient, and His truth is sufficient, and it's everlasting, and it will set us free. And as he took his last breath, all eight of us children standing around his bedside. And we'd seen some things kids shouldn't see. Each one of us were able to sing as I began singing. It is well with my soul. And God continues to heal. And God continues to extend grace. And God continues to be good. His very presence is light and life. This we know. He loves involving others in the mix. This we know. He's filled with grace and truth. And it is sufficient and abundant. This we know. See, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Abundant. What do we do? As we journey through Easter, Resurrection, Passion Week, Empty Tomb, Pentecost Sunday, do with all this I would like to encourage us and challenge with this let's keep our eyes on Jesus that's what Lent is all about let's keep our eyes on Jesus that's what life is all about keeping our eyes on Jesus amen